Now, depending how active you are on the late model Mustang forms, you may not have noticed, but there actually are some fast S650 Mustangs out there right now. I know the term fast is gonna be relative. To a lot of people, if it doesn't run eights or better, it is not fast. And I get that. I mean, today's day and age, we are in the best era ever for fast cars. I mean, it's so simple now build an eight or nine second car out of an S197 or an S550 that honestly were somewhat spoiled. But a car that runs bottom 11s or high 10s or even high nines is still a very fast car and they're faster than most of the cars on the road today. So let's talk about the S650 before we get into the cars that are running quick so far. Now with the 650, there's a lot of misconceptions about the car. A lot of people are saying they weigh more. Well, we proved they didn't. We put them both on a scale on the same day and we showed they weighed the same. Others are saying they make less power. Again, we did the same thing. We put our 2018 and our 24 on the dyno, same day, same weather conditions, every variable we could control to make it a fair comparison, and our 650 made 20 more horsepower. So why, if it weighs the same and it makes a little more power, are these cars going slower at the drag strip? Well, there's a couple reasons I think that is happening. One of the reasons, I don't think we've seen the fastest S650s yet. These cars have been out for two months. It's not years or even half a year. They've literally been on the road for two months. So there's not a lot of people who have raced these cars yet. Now the fastest pass I've heard of from an S650 so far is a 12.2 at 117 miles an hour. The fastest I've heard from an 18 through 23, that I can remember, it's like 11.79 at 119. Now I'm sure there were faster ones you guys will let me know in the comments below, but we're gonna say 11.79 versus a 12.2. We got 117 versus 119. So the 650 is slower. So if it weighs the same, makes a little more power, you know, why are they going slower? Well, the main reason for that, it's in the team. You look at the 60 foot times that the 18 to 23 cars are seeing, you look at the 60 foot for the 24s, the 24s are a little bit slower to 60 feet. It seems the Ford tune is just holding these cars back at this point. And as we know, the cars aren't tunable. I also don't think we've seen the fastest S650. I think as more cars get out there and they get some more mileage on them and more owners take them to the track, I think we will see quicker stock times out of the S650. Will it go as fast as the 550? No, I don't believe so. But I think you're gonna see 12 11, 9 maybe out of a stock S650 Mustang. Again, slower than the 550, but just the tick and a lot of that is in the tune. So I'm talking about a couple of these Mustangs that are going fast. And if you can't tune it, well then how are they gonna go fast with these cars? To me, it's good old fashioned hot rodding. Your limit on the horsepower you can make and you can't make anymore, well then you have to find other ways to go fast. You remove weight, you remove rotational mass, you figure out all kinds of tricks. And to me, that's a lot of fun. If you look at a class like Animori Coyote stock, you know, they're all limited to a point on power. So to go fast, you have to find other ways to do it, other tricks, and the 650 just the same thing. And so far, it's a lot of fun to watch. And we're talking about three cars in particular that have gone very fast so far with the S650 platform. So the first car we're talking about is John Bushman's 24 GT. What's cool about this car is unlike the other cars on this list, it's not a shop car. He's an enthusiast and he built this car in his garage after he saw some other cars starting to go fast. And again, it was basic hot rodding. Save weight, especially rotational weight. Well, lightweight brakes, lightweight wheels and tires. Add power where you can with long tube headers and a custom full aluminum exhaust system. And we'll give you a full list of mods in a minute. But basically this car is still a full interior car, which is really impressive. The second thing that's impressive is the driver, his son Johnny B, is also never drag raced before. His very first pass was in this car. And what does it run? 11 O's at 126, the best of 1101. And it runs it like a bracket car almost every time. He's got a handful of 11 O slips already. And this car is only gonna go faster. So here we're gonna give you a list of all the mods done to it, and then some video clips of this car. So his car has a DSS carbon fiber drive shaft, long tube headers, pair fourth aluminum racing mufflers, full aluminum exhaust, RC components wheels, Mickey Thompson tires, BMR tubular K member and motor mounts, aerospace drag brakes, and k and filters. He removed the front steel bumpers, put steel to progressive springs, and removed the spare tire. Full untouched interior, 340 pounds taken out of the car. So the next 
Next car on the list comes from our friends down in Georgia, and that is Steeda. Now, Steeda built an S550 Silver Bullet a few years ago that went really fast on motor and even faster with a supercharger. Well, they're doing the same thing with the 24 with Silver Bullet 2.0. What they did is they actually took a lot of parts off the original Silver Bullet, threw it on the new car, went out and ran 1120s immediately. They were the first one to actually go pretty quick with a 2024. Well, since then, they've added a few more components to the car, and now it's going a best of 1101 at 126 miles an hour. Now, they're still playing with gearing and converters and some other stuff, but without a doubt, with a few more tweaks and a little more time to the track, Steeda will no doubt have a 10-second S650 Mustang. And again, here's a list of modifications done to that and some video of the car. Full Steeda suspension, Cook's long tube headers, QA1 carbon fiber drive shaft, bare drag brakes, a Corbo driver's seat, Steeda rear seat delete, an Auburn differential, 331 gears, a Circle D converter, and a 1320 ported stock intake. So last on my list, and certainly not least, is Justin's Performance Center out of Maryland, also known as JPC. Now, JPC has run the Coyote game for years, and they have tons of cars that have won national championships that are Coyote-powered. JPC is also known for taking new platforms and really, really pushing the boundaries of what the car can do. They did it in 2005 with the three-valve, they did it again in 2011 with the Coyote, and they also did it finally now with the 2024 S650. Now again, using the same kind of bolt-ons as everybody else, with a lot of little tweaks and tricks that JPC knows how to do, they went as fast as 1083 at 129 miles an hour on motor. Now were they done with that? Not at all. Then they decided to put nitrous on the car, and they started with a 50 shot and finally worked their way up to a 200 shot of nitrous. And with that 200 shot, they went 957 at 141 miles an hour. And I don't care who you are, 950s is flying, especially for a car that is not tuned. Now, if you watch the pass, you can see they're struggling with the car a little bit because the car doesn't want to go that fast. But again, it's doing it now, and when they get it tuned, I can only imagine what it's capable of. Now, obviously, there are faster cars out there, but what JPC, Steeda, and John have done with this brand new platform is pretty impressive so far. And again, keep in mind, there is no tuning for these cars yet. Now, other platforms have dealt with this, the C8, the SRTs. Eventually, those cars had tuning, and I'm sure we will have that for the 650 as well. Now, again, I know there's people watching this gonna be like, my car went faster with so-and-so mods. You probably had the benefit of a tune. That's what's really, really holding these cars back. Now, I'm confident that tuning will be available at some point, and I can't wait to see how fast the 650 goes when it is.